Hi, I'm Alex Paul. I'm the uh, Marketing Communications Director for Globetech, your power partner, and I'd like to welcome you again to our series on uh, basic power concepts and technologies. Uh, this is our fourth module on batteries and uh, battery technologies, and uh, this series is intended for professionals and uh, business people and interested lay persons who deal with the electronics industry and have to understand the uh, technologies and uh, terminologies and concepts behind the engineering uh, that they deal with but uh, are not an engineer and uh, don't need to become one. This is not going to teach you how to build battery systems or anything along those lines, but it will show you all of the concepts you need to understand what people are talking about in a conversation that involves battery technology. First, we're going to talk about the uh, battery formulas and how a battery works, and then I'm going to go over some of the examples that I have here in front of me. So, basic battery function is actually quite simple. It's a chemical reaction between two pieces of metal and uh, working fluid. So basically, the very first battery was simply a bucket with some uh, liquid in it, acid, vinegar. Matter of fact, uh, you could use anything that has an acid consistency, lemon juice. Uh, basically, the electrolyte, you then put in pieces of uh, material usually metal, and the chemical reaction between the metals in the solution create the electrical energy. So a battery basically has two pieces of metal or two types of metal, because sometimes it doesn't have to be distinct separate uh, electrodes. In the case of, say, for example, an old-school dry battery, the uh, cathode is actually mixed up in the material that's used as the electrode, and that carbon rod in the middle of the old-school uh, carbon zinc batteries was actually just um, an electrode for uh, connection purposes. The actual cathode itself was in the paste that was in the battery. So for all intents and purposes, just realize that somewhere inside of the battery, there's um, a mixture of chemicals and uh, materials involving usually metal electrodes, or sometimes it could be uh, electrodes involving exotic materials. And uh, that reaction within that container creates the electrical um, react, the chemical reaction that creates the electricity. Now, the thing about uh, batteries is that just as they discharge, the types of batteries that we can recharge, the electrolyte has a uh, capability that under a reverse current flow that it reconstitutes itself or it reacquires its electrons or it uh, changes state back to its previous case. In the case of a lead acid battery, the kind that's in your car, the battery discharges to a point where the chemical cons construction inside the electrolyte changes actually and recharging it actually converts the chemi chemistry back to make it more acidic uh, more uh, able to generate electricity. So a battery can generate electricity from an initial uh, chemical reaction, or in the case of a rechargeable battery, that chemical reaction is literally reversed during the recharge cycle so that it can be accomplished again. Now, there are a couple of different types of uh, battery chemistries. You know, we were saying about the electrodes involved. So the uh, uh, chemistries that you will encounter the most, already, I already said lead acid, only automobiles. I mention it because it's a very common battery type because there's one in every car, truck, and vehicle on the road. But it's a very robust technology, it's a very reliable technology, but it's a very heavy and bulky technology, which is why it's only uh, used primarily in vehicles. It's also used in other types of uh, physical plants, backup power in uh, energy facilities where you have, for example, an uh, uh, uninterruptible power supply. There'll be a massive uh, battery, usually lead acid, inside of that. So we have lead acid. Now the term that you've almost all certainly heard is uh, nickel cadmium. It's a rechargeable technology.
And uh, you may he have heard the term with rechargeable batteries, battery memory, or something along those lines. And nickel cadmium is the uh, battery formulation that is actually susceptible to that. Basically what happens is, is that the uh, charge recharge cycles, if you do not recharge the battery completely, eventually over time those short recharge cycles uh, create a chemical potential within the battery that it cannot be charged beyond that. You can eventually recharge it using um, different methodologies to uh, break through this uh, chemical barrier, but it, and essentially if you've got a nickel cadmium battery at home and you've got a nickel cadmium charger, over time, uh, if you don't completely discharge and recharge that battery, that battery will eventually develop a shorter and shorter cycle life. Now, another rechargeable technology is nickel metal hydride. That's used a lot in power tools. Um, nickel metal hydride does not suffer from the uh, chemistry issues of nickel uh, cadmium for as far as short recharge cycles, but the uh, bad problem, I shouldn't say bad, but the issue with uh, nickel metal hydride is short cycle life. You can't recharge nickel metal hydride batteries as often as nickel cadmium or even lithium ion batteries, which are also rechargeable. But your lithium ion batteries are also rechargeable, have a far um, higher cycle life can uh, boast very high densities. Lithium is a very light metal, so they're very uh, light batteries. And if you use the, um, you can create the batteries with a polymer uh, construction and make, allow you to make exotic shapes or different types, as I'll uh, show you in uh, the demonstration of products. So uh, we've got the different formulas. Now the thing about lithium ion that you need to worry about is it does take lots and lots of charge cycles, but if you have a, uh, let's say for example, a laptop or a portable device that you're constantly leaving plugged in, to the battery you're having hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of short recharge cycles and it eventually will uh, degrade the battery over time. So if you leave your laptop or some other portable device hooked up to power most of the time, it would actually extend your life if you disconnected the battery when you were uh, hooked up to uh, power or as soon as your battery was charged up, disconnected from power, allow the laptop to run on its battery until it uh, exhausts it and then hook it back up to power so that you're getting a nice uh, clean uh, cycle life with the uh, battery. So we've got lead acid, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, and lithium ion. These are all rechargeable technologies. Now there are lithium battery technologies that are not designed for recharging. Uh, lithium thionyl chloride, for example, that uh, advantage of that technology is those batteries last 10 plus years and are very reliable, so they're used in things like uh, remote uh, meter stations and places where the battery doesn't take a lot of power but it has to be trusted for a decade or two in operation in a place where it may not be uh, looked at for quite a while. So uh, that's the battery formulations and basic um, battery technology. So now that we've talked about the different chemistries, the way the battery is configured actually is tremendously varied if you think about it. Now we have the traditional uh, chargers and traditional battery forms that we know of from consumer. The primary advantage of this is of course these are standardized packages so you know that a double or a triple A battery will fit whatever devices that are rated to hold that. If um, the device is small, you have uh, button cells or coin cells to actually uh, provide the power. In most cases, the small battery cells are not rechargeable, but in some systems they are. Usually when you go for a small system that requires rechargeable batteries, you go for custom batteries. For example, this is a uh, small little solar power thing that uh, you put in the sunlight that stores the energy because a solar cell is just simply a uh, source of electricity. It doesn't have any storage, you actually have to add storage to a solar-based device. And in this case, 
it's a small uh, flat pack battery and as you see here this battery is not a standard shape and it's uh, not even packaged in any kind of hard case because it's designed to go inside a de device as a subsystem but this is as much of a battery as this is it's just that this is designed for use uh, to user replaceable uh, form factor standard and uh, universally available. The uh, form factor type of battery is usually put into uh, specialty purpose devices or uh, areas where you're not expected to touch or maintain the battery. Now of course we have battery packs. This battery pack is actually made up of multiple cylindrical cells. This battery pack also contains electronics to manage the charging of the battery because one of the things about a battery, as I had mentioned, is that uh, rechargeable batteries, you actually can reverse the chemistries inside these batteries uh, in the recharge process, but you have to manage the energy as it goes back into the battery because you can't just simply attach electricity to it and have it uh, go. You have to actually watch the charge state of the battery. You have to make sure that the temperature of the battery doesn't uh, go too high because obviously it generates heat to uh, discharge and to recharge a battery. You're moving electrons around uh, waste energy generated as heat. So, but in the case of this battery pack, there's an actual circuit built into it. So this is an, a, what you call a smart battery pack available from Globe Tech, by the way. Uh, a smart battery pack that you would just be able to hook up to a system and just dump straight, um, say, 12 volt power into this, and it will manage its own recharging. A larger battery pack, this is a battery pack that uh, I cut open to show that it's really, see, made up of multiple smaller cells, but a battery pack of this nature uh, might have a monitor chip to keep track of its charge date and uh, battery temperature and such to ensure f uh, proper operation. That would be a smart battery, but a battery pack of this nature would probably use an external battery charger that doesn't have a bay, of course, obviously, or plug it in. Uh, in the case of this, this is a, a Globe Tech supply. Just a little quick pitch. We also offer them with uh, universal uh, plugs, so that way your battery charger will work in any country. But uh, a large battery pack would use an external, uh, completely separate power supply for the recharging, whereas a smaller case, in this case, this is a uh, camera battery. This is a enclosed battery. It's not designed to be universal among devices, but it does recognize that the user might have to replace it for recharging purposes or to switch batteries while they're operating. So this is a non-standard size, but it is a modular system to allow the user to replace it. And in this case, the charger is a unit with the battery so that you can charge it up as a separate uh, system, as I had said, so you can say, for example, have two batteries and run one on the device and have one charging at all times. But in this case, it's a, a custom package, but designed for a uh, person to handle it. So the bottom line is, is that battery packs and battery systems are everywhere. Every single portable device has a battery in it. There's no exception. There's no magic trick. You have to have storage of energy and um, capacitors and the like provide short-term high burst energy storage, but for consistent long-term powering of electronic devices, you need a battery. And uh, most devices today use rechargeable batteries. And the important things to remember with recharging the battery is you want to have a, a good si um, practice on how you use the battery to minimize any issues and then have a smart battery system where the battery manages its charge state and knows its temperature and keeps track of everything to prevent any kind of uh, catastrophic failure of the battery or if some failure is eminent that it recognizes those circumstances and situations and either shuts itself down or creates an alarm. So um, batteries, be they for consumer products or for specialty products, they're all based on cells, and inside of each of these cells is this chemical reaction creating the electricity. And how we manage that power coming out of the device and how we manage that power going back into it to recharge it is the basis of uh, all the power electronics that you see out there. And obviously, the better the systems, the better the battery performance, the higher the reliability of the device. So. If you have any problems or interests or uh, needs for power systems involving batteries, please contact Globetech at uh, www.globetek.com uh, or uh, just send a note to sales at globetech.com. This is Alex Paul for Globetech, your power partner. Thanks for taking the time to be with us.